In this episode, we look at one of the top contenders of the late 1800s and early 1900s who fell short of winning a world title. How good was George Elbows McFadden? Michael James Crotty was born on September 16, 1874, in Limerick, County Limerick, Ireland. McFadden stood 5 feet 6 inches. He had an aggregate weight of 131 pounds for his career. McFadden's career spanned from 1894 to 1908. He had 46 wins, 13 losses, and 21 draws. 26 of his wins were by knockout. He also had one no contest and six no decision bouts. His win percentage was 58, and his knockout percentage was 33. McFadden is most associated with the lightweight division, which ranges from 127 to 135 pounds. Elbows McFadden was a unique boxer with an uncanny ability to block shots with his elbows, which is the basis for his nickname. Additionally, McFadden wasn't shy in using his elbows for advantages in other ways. He was a scrappy inside fighter who would throw shots of all types, from any angle. McFadden's first real test came in his first fight on January 16, 1894, when he scored a third-round knockout over contender Sam Bolan. The two would rematch on December 7, 1894, where McFadden lost a four-round decision to Bolan, who would fight several prominent names from the era. On November 16, 1895, McFadden would enter the ring with another solid contender from the time in Billy Kid McPartland. McFadden would defeat McPartland via decision in four rounds. On June 14, 1896, the two would rematch in New York, with McFadden again securing a fourth-round decision victory. McFadden would lock horns with then-undefeated contender Spike Sullivan in a 20-round lightweight contest on December 12, 1896, in New York. Sullivan fought on the lead foot for most of the fight as the aggressor, but McFadden would land the cleaner shots throughout the contest. In the end, the referee declared the fight a draw. On April 14, 1899, McFadden would face arguably the stiffest test of his career in a man regarded as the greatest lightweight of all time, the old master, Joe Gans. The fight went down in Brooklyn, New York, and Gans came into the fight with a record of 74 wins with only 4 defeats and 10 draws. McFadden used a combination of excellent bodywork behind his stiff left jab to keep Gans honest throughout the fight. McFadden continued to press and secured what the Brooklyn Daily Eagle called a staging knockout over the bloodied and bruised Gans in the 23rd round. In his next fight on May 9, 1899, McFadden faced former world lightweight champion Frank Earn. McFadden brought the fight to Earn but would suffer a points loss to a Swiss challenger in 25 rounds. This led to a July 28, 1899, rematch with Joe Gans in Brooklyn with around 5,000 spectators. The fight was a high-paced, elbow-filled affair as the two men battled on the inside. McFadden focused on the body similar to their first contest, but Gans was more aggressive in his return. Gans dropped McFadden twice, but McFadden finished the 25th and final round with an edge. Though many felt that Gans won, the fight was declared a draw. McFadden's next fight would be on October 6, 1899, when he faced another former world lightweight champion, George Kid Levine in Brooklyn. McFadden would show that he was a high-caliber fighter by knocking out Levine in the 19th of a scheduled 25 rounds. McFadden and Gans would be back at it on Halloween night, 1899. McFadden continued an aggressive approach, using his elbows to flail shots as he looked to tear into Gans's body. Gans showed his mettle as he won a 25-round decision in the rough-and-tumble affair. McFadden would draw with contender Wilmington Jack Daly on December 23, 1899, before defeating Wilmington via decision in six rounds on April 17, 1900. McFadden would then knock out old foe Kid McPartland on August 9, 1900, before a September 7 contest with Joe Gans. Gans would win a six-round newspaper decision, and the two men would face off again a month later on October 2, fighting to a 10-round draw. In eight rounds, McFadden would again knock out Wilmington Jack Daly on June 28, 1901,
before stepping in the ring again with Joe Gans on February 17, 1902, losing a six-round newspaper decision. On June 27, 1902, McFadden got a shot at the world lightweight title against multi-time foe Joe Gans in the final fight of their rivalry. The fight was no contest as Gans dropped McFadden multiple times on road to a third-round TKO victory. In Boston, McFadden would fight to a hotly contested draw with Mike Twin Sullivan on March 24, 1903. He followed that up with a July 2, 1903 draw with contender Jimmy Gardner over 10 rounds. On July 29, 1904, McFadden would step in the ring with a fighter regarded as the greatest boxer of all time, the Boston bone crusher, Sam Langford. This would turn out to be a mismatch for McFadden at this stage of his career. In the second round, Langford landed a counter that sent McFadden down and out, Handlers taking two minutes to revive McFadden. McFadden is one of the highly regarded contenders of his time. He is undoubtedly one of the greatest never to win a world title. He beat two of the top fighters in his peer group during his run, which was no easy feat. McFadden faced four Hall of Famers. His most notable fights were against Hall of Famer Joe Gans Hall of Famer Frank Earn Hall of Famer George Kid Levine and Hall of Famer Sam Langford. George Elbows McFadden died on August 30, 1948, at 73. He was a tough and reasonably skilled fighter on a long list of great fighters never to win world titles. Title or not, McFadden left his mark on the sport.